Deep in the Darien jungle lies one of Panama's oldest fishing lodges. Since 1963, anglers from all around the world come here not just for the fishing, but to also explore the rich ecological diversity within these waters. Nestled within Piñas Bay, Tropic Star Lodge and the surrounding area is nothing short of beautiful. Huge thank you to Big Adventure for sponsoring this trip and giving us the privilege to work alongside saltwater sportsmen in documenting some of Central America's most remote coastline and the surreal beauty that surrounds it. We made it. Welcome to Panama. Nice to meet you. Oh, we made it. Dennis. The water's looking good. The reef looking good. There's bait popping up everywhere. Tuna offshore, inshore. Um, we saw what 12 cabera snappers on a on, on a casting big poppers. I believe it's for. I believe it's your. That's, that's what we like to do. Yeah. Just just put in the time. Yep. Yeah. That's so cool. You guys are so cute. Good to be here. Thank you. We are here. Woo! We made it. It's a walk on drink. Wow. Thank you. This is a rum punch. You're welcome. Cheers, Dennis. Guys, finally, welcome to Tropic Star. Yeah, we are. We want to make sure that this is one of the best holidays, if not the best holiday you guys have ever had. Yeah! Here we go! Yeah. <laughs> guys, 99.8% of the world have not been where you are right now. There are places along this, this area where there are humans have never put their foot. So lap it up, take it in, explore as much as you want. Morning, guys. We just left Piñas Bay, which is where Tropic Star Lodge is kind of situated. They got that beautiful dock right there. We're gonna run out, and the first thing, headed to the bay grounds. Stop at a few spots on the way. Uh, we're headed to the next spot now. So, you bear it on. Most of the captains like to start the morning popping to try to get on a good topwater Kubera bite, but it was relatively slow. And after talking to the other captains on the radio, nobody had any luck with the popping. So, it was time to switch gears. And here we have Dario the mate getting our live bait stuff ready. Guys, we're gonna go big, 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 big,
spoon, like a little fart spoon for the meter. And then you have your planer. And all that planer is going to do is it's left. It's going to allow to get this spoon kind of down deeper in the waterfall where we feed on. Wow! Sick! Alright guys, we just pulled up. Out of the corner of the eye, the captain saw a big bait ball. Brooke, look at how excited Brooke is right here. Look at this smile. You see him flashing on top, skipping base. So we just put the planers out. I'm excited to see this. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Show him off, Rex. Oh. What you guys saw right there, there's six tuna tubes. Bonitas need to be constantly swimming or they're gonna die. All pelagic fish, they can't just sit still. There's something about their anatomy where they can't sit still. If you had a huge live well, like a, I'm talking like 300 gallon well, those bonitas will stay alive because they can swim circles, but most boats don't come equipped with that. So tuna tubes, what it does is, you put them down head first and it's a constant flow of water going past their gills. So they're gonna stay nice and calm. They don't have to exert a lot of energy and it's gonna mimic that circular motion of them just constantly swimming. Can I hear what your American accent is like? No, you don't. Yes, let's hear it, let's hear it. Well, let's hear yeah, it. So we're hooked into a two bonita here. Uh, we're gonna go catch a big Kubera today. Uh, about <laughs> as good as I can do. I think every every Englishman and woman who like tries to do an American accent, I feel like they put a, a very West Coast California spin on it. Like yeah, a very like, yeah. Drawn out, like, yeah, bro. I, I feel like I exaggerate it a little too much sometimes. <laughs> All right, guys, so the rig, this is going to be used to bridle the bait. You got a little piece of uh, braid right here, big circle hook, 300 pound leader. You know, we're not messing around, like I said, a lot of it. And then uh, I'm going to have Rex, who's actually the fishing director at Tropic Star Lodge, kind of walk you through the process how we're gonna fish these baits and how we're gonna present them to the Cabrera. You're gonna have the needle on the thread like that. Let the bait out, go straight through the eyes. What this does, instead of uh, hooking it through the lip, which gives them a higher mortality rate, they'll die faster if you hook them. You go through the eyes, go back under the thread like that, hook them and send them. Like what we're going to do here, we're going to let a little line out. Oh, he takes a rubber band, he attaches it to the main line. That device right there, that's a downrigger. It kind of works like a planer in the boat in the sense that it's got this big lead ball. You drop that lead ball down to your desired depth and you got kind of a little gauge, like a ruler, that lets you know exactly how many yards, meters, or feet. You're sending it down. He attaches the rubber band to a snap spool attached to that lead. So now your bonita's right here. As you're letting down that lead ball, your entire main line and everything's gonna be lower and lower and lower so you can present it down deep. And uh, you know, the Kuberas, like we said, they're bottom fish. So you wanna get them as close down to them to attract their attention as possible. Look at that, guys. We've been trolling this, not even knowing that it got a hit. It's like Rex said, you you might have to fish four baits before you hook one. He came up, looks like he munched it right there, tried to injure it by the tail, and then they're not interested anymore. I think as soon as they know that this thing is not alive and there's a hook, they just let it go. So time to get a fresh bait back out there. Well, Captain, Captain just got word that they're catching tuna about nine miles offshore, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Maybe the inshore bite is just not too hot today, and there's a lot of rain that way which is where the Kuberas are, so we're gonna send it offshore, hopefully get into some yellow fins here. We found this really big school of spinner dolphin. And the spinner dolphin and tuna kind of help each other to hunt bait. The spinner dolphin will be up top, and the tuna sit underneath them, and they kind of wait to signal. I guess they see the spinner dolphin when they corral a ball of bait, and then the tuna's ambush them from underneath, and then I think other times when the tunas are down deep, they probably see the, the spinner dolphin probably see the tuna. It's a nice symbiotic relationship where they both benefit. But you can sure as heck bet if you're in Central America and you see spinner dolphin, there's gonna be tunas around.
Oh. There it is! <laughs> Smith the Popper. You guys, this is like something straight out of Discovery Channel that you would see. Spinner dolphin everywhere. Tuna's blowing up. Only boat out here on them. That's the best part. Oh man, mine just spit the hooks. Oh, look, I'm coming from all. Dude, his fish is freaking out. <laughs> Oi. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, he's coming to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Dario! That is a beautiful Panamanian yellowfin tuna. Been crushed with all them. They're like that nice, fun sized tuna that you can catch all day and it's not gonna kill you versus like a giant one that you can fight for a really long time and break oh! your back. These are the fun sized tuna. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Continue. No, no, you're fine. Doubled up with my babe. Did you pull off again? No. No, me. I just can't keep him glued today. I don't know what's going on with me. Brookie's two for two now. I can't keep mine hooked. It just hit the water and that tuna crushed it. I'm currently zero for three on tuna. I don't know what's going on. My my got rubber hooks on today. Every single tuna swam at the boat and just spit it for me. Oh! Nice. Nope, he came off. Come on, do not come off. I'm gonna drill those hooks in them. Let's see if we can get one. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that was the part of the boat, it stopped reeling. Wow, that was crazy. Like Brooke said, once you stop reeling, sometimes that's when you get bit. I think the appeal for the popper for the tuna, they see that silhouette on top. They don't know what it is. It might be a flying fish or just a sardine. And they gotta come up to investigate, but they don't go slow when they investigate. Their mouth is wide open and they want that popper. We're all on. Tripled up, baby. It's a triple. Triple. Woo. I gotta get 
hand over your chin. <laughs> you didn't like that, huh? Absolute chaos. That's what it's about right there. Interesting couple minutes. <laughs> there it is, guys. Beautiful yellowfin tuna at Tropic Star Lodge. You see, he was not coming off of that popper right there. These tuna, they sit there down there, real deep. They come up and they ambush it. Look at those huge pectoral fins on that guy. He's like a jetliner right there. Incredibly strong, powerful, amazing to eat. You already know that. We're gonna have good sashimi and sushi tonight. But we found this big school of yellow fins and Rex says that they're pretty much here year round. This time of year, this is like the average size, 30 pound, 20 pound class fish and we're having the time of our lives. Gosh, I wasn't even looking. You got that one? That's sick. I don't, I just, I, I'm left speechless on, whoa! My fish just decided to wake up, huh? Dale, 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 dale. <laughs> you see, you can hear the captain getting excited. I love it. Well, the day started out slow, but I can't picture a better way to end it. I think we only got like 15 minutes left of fishing. Lines are out at 3 p.m. at the lodge. And seeing spinner dolphin in the background, tuna's blowing up your popper, getting tight with your babe right next to you, no better feeling. Damn, this fish ripped. He's so excited. He's so excited. The captain is so happy. We're gonna let this one go. He's hooked actually really good. He's not bleeding and the fish box is full. So no need to be greedy. Look at that. One final look, gorgeous yellowfin tuna, all lit up, such a pretty fish. This guy's going back in. We're, we're letting it go, right? Yeah. Best way to release those things, head down. Welcome to Panama, welcome to Tropic Star. Capitan! Gracias! Cheers to the first day, guys. <laughs> we got octopus, look at that. Absolutely just gorgeous plating. You know the chef here is legit. Are they tarpon? No, they're jacks. Big school of jacks, guys. Big school of jacks. This is the bread and butter fish of the Pacific Coast. You got your Jack Terrell. Feels good though to pull on something. Brookie's first fish of the day was an African pompano. For me, it should be this jack. So we've been slow trolling um, goggle eye and blue runners up and down these beaches and all these kind of like rocky areas. And I saw this big school of fish just kind of fitting on top. Pretty sure it's a Jack Curvel that I'm hooked up to. Oh, that is the worst place to hook a Jack right there. So there it is, first fish of the day for me. Bricky got an African pompano, which we actually harvested because they're delicious. Jacks on the other hand, a lot more redder meat. He's on, Dennis. He's on, he's on. That didn't take long. Come on. 
We need to get him out of the structure as soon as possible. I think we're in the, oh, I got color. We're in the safe zone now. No, it's not red. Oh, it's a jack. Damn, that's crazy. That jack ate a whole, ate a whole bonita, guys. Look at that. That fish right there ate a whole bonita. So you guys see how hard this fish pulled. And the fish we're going after are much bigger than this. This is an Almaco jack. We have these back home, but for some reason they get so much bigger on the Pacific side of the world. Um, we're actually gonna keep this guy. They're delicious. They're highly uh, sought after fish here in Panama. I just like how you get so excited. Victor <laughs> is was... famous for whatever Calling he wants fish. it to be is what he dreams of is the entire catch. Pretty much. Like, you want a Kubera and every single fish that you're going to hook for the rest of the trip is a Kubera snapper. <laughs> she caught me. I'm, I'm caught red-handed with that stage. No, it, it just, you're very excited and I really hope that you get your Kubera snapper. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I know I got excited, but you know what? I gotta get you guys pumped up, ready for the Kubera, you know? And we gotta get the energy up on this video. And it's really slow on the radio. Like I said, you know, you come to a exotic destination like this, you think we're gonna catch fish no matter what. That's not the way it is. Fish are not hungry. And this is what I'm throwing. So Nate's got a popper. You guys know what a popper is. This is a little stick bait. So this is a sinking stick bait. It looks perfectly like a sardine. And what I'll do is cast them out, get them as close to that rock as possible. And instead of reeling it in right away, I'm gonna let it sink like 10 or 15 seconds because you got to think that a lot of the fish are down there and not just up top. So let it sink, let it sink. And then once I get to my desired depth, I'll just make these long sweeps. And when I do that sweep, that lure gets this real erratic side to side action and then it'll sink again. So it kind of imitates a wounded bait fish on its last leg of life. I like that. Last leg of life. Last leg of life. But fish don't have any legs. Have that last, last <laughs> gill of life. You guys didn't see very many fish from this day because most of them were caught by my fiance, Brookie, who also made a video from this trip, which you guys can find linked below. Prior to us arriving, a group of kayak fishing creators actually spent a week filming and fishing their experience. So if that's something you're interested in pursuing, you can find all that information linked below. And by now you guys are probably wondering, Vic, where are these big fish on these big baits you promised us? Well, we still got one more day of fishing ahead of us. I hope it's a rock snapper. I've never caught a rock snapper. No. First fish in Panama on a casted bait for me. Just casting along this rocky shoreline. It is some type of snapper. Look at that thing. Snapper's about as big as the jig. Woo! All right, so check it out. They call this a uh, yellow snapper. Just casting that shoreline right there, and there's probably a bunch of little snapper species, rock snapper, yellow snapper, juvenile cuberas. Um, I'm gonna keep casting the stick bait, but they, list, they let most of their snapper species grow because they're all slow growing. Um, so we're gonna let this guy go, but real cool looking little fish. I want a big one. I want one like 10 times the size of him. Dario was up there. We were all eating lunch inside and he hooked a rooster on the stick bait. He's pulling good. <laughs> Roosters doing what they do. They change direction constantly. Rooster fish are like always on caffeine. They, it's like they just drank 15 cups of coffee. That's the best way to describe a rooster fish fight. Super erratic. You never know what their next move is going to be. This one's actually pulling real good. Oh my gosh, the comb. The famous comb coming out of the water. How cool is that? Oh, 
Oh yeah, good Ready? job, Rex. Oh, that's, that's, dude, that's, that's bigger than 20 oh, pounds. Yeah. That's a nice that's one. That's a good one, yeah. Oh yeah, here you go. Good job, Sweet. Dario. Oh. Beautiful rooster fish, all lit up, hard fighting. He's got his comb, he's got his little afro showing off for us, the little mohawk. Never get tired of catching these fish, especially with that pretty view in the background. We got the mountains behind us. Great crew. All right, so we're just gonna revive him now. Um, Fidel, the captain, has got the boat in gear. Just letting water rush past its gills because these fish, they fight very hard and then they fight even harder in the boat. They do not like to be held. There's a lot of docile fish, but rooster fish, they just tend to beat themselves up. So we're just taking the extra time to really revive them. I'm gonna try to put his head into the current and go off Mr. Rooster. There he goes. What do you know? We've been hearing stories about whale sharks being around recently. There's a whale shark right there. Dennis is gonna hop in, get some footage of him from Let's underwater. Go. Oh my gosh, there's the whale shark. Dennis is swimming for his life. How often do you get to swim with a whale shark? This is Dennis's best moment of his life right now. He's been dreaming of jumping in the water with a whale shark. How often would you say you guys see whale sharks? This time of year, I mean, a couple times a week. Um, but between a big fleet of boats, that's, that's not all the time, so. No. We're lucky we came across this guy. Not every day you get to swim with a whale shark, huh? Incredible. Congratulations. That was a little tick on the bucket list for sure. <laughs> Give me one word. Damn <laughs> <laughs> Delivered. <laughs> you got, in, you got yeah. in the water so oh, quick. <laughs> We had everything prepared for like a, like a big rooster or something, and a uh, whale shark decides to show up. So, hey, took advantage of the situation. Popper got crushed right next to the rocks. I just had uh, another group of fish. I don't know what they were, but they were really red. And this popper just got smoked. I'm gonna come back here. Oh, oh, baby, baby. Oh. It's okay, it's okay, relax. It's okay, it's okay, relax, relax. Not, that's the mic, it's the mic. I don't want this to get away. It's a thousand dollar mic, sir. <laughs> Better catch this fish now. <laughs> that was stupid on my part. I don't know what I was thinking. I think every boat I always go on, I always ask the captains, like, have you ever had a customer fall in? I actually asked Rex. <laughs> I'm the first one. <laughs> There's the monster that made me fall in right there. <laughs> See ya, dude. You, you gotta be careful when you're coming off the bow to the back. I got a little careless, slipped. Tried to grab onto the outrigger. That clearly didn't happen, but you know what? Could have been a lot worse. No one got hurt. You just gotta laugh about things like this. And you were like trying to like save your microphone. <laughs> yeah. So we have, we don't have them on me, but normally I have like a mic taped to me right here. And wait, Dennis has in a little waterproof bag right there. And they're not cheap, so that's what I was like really trying to scramble on the boat. I think Brick thought you were that was... like climbing in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Brick thought that I was getting attacked by a shark or something. No, I'm not afraid of swimming. You were like acting like you had never been in the water before. I was like, relax, relax. And you're like, it's not me, it's the mic. And I was like, oh. <laughs> that's exactly it. Oh, a rock snapper. A big boy. Big boy, oh, look at that. Okay. Have you ever ate one of these before? It tastes like shoes. Have you tried one though? I've never tried one. I'm sorry. I don't want to try one. Alright, so everyone says these are snakes. 
sneaker snappers because they taste like a shoe. I've never tried one before. Dennis behind the camera said that he's tried them and it's not good. It kind of reminds me of like our sheep's head, but they got, if you look in the, that mouth there, they got teeth kind of like a sheep's head, rows of teeth, and little like nostrils. But that is a rock snapper, AKA a sneaker snapper. And since they don't eat them, he's going back. See ya. Definitely got hit. Uh, smack him. Okay. Uh, all the way down by the tail. We want to hit a T up at this end. Okay, right. Perfect time. Dennis just put the drone up, huh? <laughs> you like my little lab setup? Our other mic got fried after I fell in. We got fish with a view. Oh, it's a rooster! Rooster that wanted to stay down, huh? They usually want to come up. Okay, so Dennis is getting the uh, underwater housing ready because we're gonna get some really cool video of this new rooster fish underwater, but you wanna do it before you get him in the boat so that way you can revive this fish properly. Ooh, but he's not, he's not done anyway. Two roosters for us today, huh? Oh, he wants to jump, look at him. Perfect, perfect way to end the afternoon. Oh my gosh, he just pulled. Just sitting there. Man. I mean, you guys got to see it. It was another beautiful like 15 pound rooster fish and we really wanted to get some cool underwater video, but unfortunately just him sitting there and sitting in the whitewash, turning his head, he just threw the hook. Well, unfortunately, we never got our big trophy Kubera snapper. The potential was there as you guys clearly see, and these big fish in Panama love these bonitas, whether you're talking about a big black marlin, Kubera snapper, monster mahi mahi, but it just wasn't our week. However, we got a really cool panga afternoon session coming at you now. All right guys, we're doing a little afternoon sim. One thing you can do at the lodge is actually fish on a panga. We got our captain back there. Ryan, Woo! Rex. And uh, we're gonna try a different approach, see if they like a little stealth because those Bertrams are super loud. Sight that never gets old. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was a rooster. Oh my god, that <laughs> hit was... Wow. Woo. Rex got himself a Kubera. Damn, they love that popper, don't they? All right, all in? Yeah. All in? See? Yeah. 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 Nice job, There he dude. is. Oh! Oh, I mean, nice. that came straight out of his yeah, mouth. There dude. we go. Wow. That's wow, sick. just like that came out. Yep. <laughs> yeah, look at those teeth. Go on, open up for us. Open up. Woo. Chompers. Yeah, look at that, bro. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. That's what we came out here for. Look at his yeah. eyeball moving, looking at you. <laughs> hey, buddy. All right, guys, you get a behind-the-scenes look. We're here with the head chef of Tropic Star Lodge. We got Gabriel in the house, and yeah. uh, he's gonna walk you through basically what he's making for dinner. The cool thing about this place is if you don't like fish, which you're probably at the wrong lodge if you don't like fish, but he's making beef. They make, we had octopus last night. They do all sorts of different dishes. You get a full four-course meal, appetizer, soup, salad, breadsticks, and then dessert at the very end. And everything here is top-notch. Mongolian beef the first. The second is uh, trim tempura from tempura with uh, noodles. And other is uh, seared, um, 
sesame, sesame seed tuna. Yeah, sesame seed tuna, right? Looks like he's shaving away some of the elephant tuna. Got a nice sharp knife. Is this going to be the sesame seed? Yes. Hello. Hold on. Hello. Look at all this good food. The tempura noodles? Yeah, Dennis, get some of that plating. Chicken? Or is that no, that's a beef. Beef. Yeah. Beef. yeah this, uh, Mongolian beef. Uh, finishes, uh, dark, dark okay, sauce. dark sorry. Look at all this delicious food, Dennis, huh? We got the fish, seafood. Look at that. Oh my gosh, shrimp and octopus. Mm. So you guys know how hard it is these groups of people. It is an art. There's some giant prawns. Garnish. All right, sesame seared tuna time. That oil is piping hot. You guys see that smoke coming off that pan. You're just gonna do it probably 15, 20 seconds on each side, already going to turn. Just give it a little color. It's beautiful, no? Yeah. Yep. It's on the menu, no? No, I. Wow, look at that tuna. Perfectly red in the middle. Nice crust on the outside. Got some veg and some microgreens. Finish it off with a little soy drizzle. So no matter how many times I've had seared tuna in my life, whether it's at home or at a restaurant, I will never ever get tired of this flavor in my mouth. Fresh tuna that you caught the same day does not get better than that. This is three of the four courses. We got dessert coming up next. Everyone's got a little bit of a different dish. The side of the table, we all got tuna, brookie, and Dennis got some Mongolian beef and then some massive prawns over there which look absolutely delicious. So we are gonna ho go ahead and dig in and we will see you guys either tomorrow or this is gonna be the end of the video. I'm not sure, haven't really decided, but all in all, the best times of our lives. This lodge does not miss a beat when it comes to anything. Food, fishing, service, it's incredible. So I'll have all of their stuff linked below. Till the next one, see ya. Tried hard enough. To another great day of fishing. All right, three, two, one.